All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, tackle the uh, unit review for the upcoming exam. Um, hopefully this is gonna work out well um, and uh, it'll be helpful to some of you guys. So here we go, kicking it off at the very beginning. Um, these, uh, this first chunk has to do with the idea of separation of variables. You'll notice in this problem, we have a mixture of Y's and X's going on. So the first thing we need to do is I need to effectively separate the Y's and X's. So this time, if we were to cross multiply, we could um, quickly get everything that involves Y on one side and everything that involves X on the other side. And of course, we are solving the differential equation. So we're gonna integrate both sides. Noticing that there is um, no bounds of integration, so we're gonna get a plus C in this problem, but we're gonna figure that out. So the integral of four Y, of course, is two Y squared. Um, the integral of E to the half X, and, and I've had a lot of you think it's times a half, but remember this is an antiderivative, not a derivative. So the derivative would have that one half in front. So we're gonna actually have to cut, we're gonna have to double that to make that work. Um, this is one of those places where you have options I think I would divide both sides by two at this moment to make life a little bit easier, but keep in mind that half of a constant is still a constant. So remember these C's are not the same C, but they're still just a constant. Now, according to this, if I plug in zero for X, I should get three for Y. So if I plug in zero for X at this moment and half of zero, of course, is zero, I'm supposed to get three for Y. So e to the zero, of course, is one. So it looks to me like c better be eight. And so now I can kind of finish my problem from right here. I know that y squared is e to the one half x plus c, which we knew to be eight. And therefore we take a square root of both sides. And I would normally put a plus or minus on that. But in this particular story, it is only the positive of the two because Clearly when we did this, we didn't get negative three, we got positive three. So um, the negative would have given me a different answer. Now the temptation people have is to cross multiply because it worked on this problem. This problem is a little bit different. Again, I wanna get the X's together and the Y's together. So if I had DY on one side and DX on the other, and there's nothing that says that Y has to be left and X has to be right, but it just worked for this problem. So what I did is if I wanted this Y plus two to come to the left side, I'd have to divide it over to here. And to get the X on the side, I would just leave it alone. And we're gonna integrate this. Now, this particular problem, you wanna remember that the, that the integral of one over U is an LN U. And so we're sitting at this idea right here. Um, I kinda wanna put absolute values, but sometimes they kinda bug me. So, because these are positives, I'm not gonna need that absolute value. So we don't really need that, okay? Now, this sucks to have LN equals LN. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the base of this thing and pop it across. That's gonna be Y plus two equals E raised to the, this stuff. Now there's a whole lot that goes into this. So I don't wanna go over the whole thing in class, but remember, if you have x raised to the five plus three, that's the same thing as x to the five times x to the three. That's like one of those basic ideas of mathematics. I don't know if you could see it because um, I have my little picture up there. So this is e to something times e to a constant, which is just some new constant. So um, taking the time to do a little bit of like simplification, I can actually ironically, even though that C is the exponent, E to a constant is just a constant. Then one last thing is E raised to the LN is just gonna be that value. So keeping moving things along right here, ironically, the thing comes all the way down to this very, very simple state. This trick going from here to here is a super helpful little story. So now I'm gonna go ahead and use my idea that if I plug in nine for X, I'm gonna get three for Y. So I just found out that C equals one half. And now I have a nice solution to my differential equation because if I found out that that C value is a half, um, I kind of like this thing right here because that looks like a nice little um, problem that was pretty easily solved, okay. 
Now, moving on to number three, uh, my, my goal was to maybe just do the first page on this one. So first things first, um, when we move things around, it works best if we can move them around through the idea of multiplication as opposed to addition or subtraction. So I move the X to the fourth to the other side. Um, I'd like to get all of the Y's on one side. So I guess I'm gonna leave this two Y cubed over here. I'd like to move this X squared across. So I'll divide both sides by X squared and I could bring the dx up. So if you kind of look at this, if I multiplied both sides by dx, now we can integrate both sides. We're looking at y to the fourth. If we divide by two, we're looking at a half and we got a one third x cubed again, plus some constant. Um, I don't really like this two here, so let's multiply both sides by it. And two times a constant, of course, is a constant. So um, I think right now I would just go ahead and find that constant at this moment. So if I plugged in six for X and two for Y, two to the fourth power is 16. Um, six to the third power, I think is 216. Let's see, what is negative two thirds of six to the third? That's gonna be the number negative 144. So it looks like C would be maybe 160. So we are sitting right here, kind of not gonna have a lot of room on this. I've got Y to the fourth equals negative two thirds X cubed plus 160. And so Y would again normally be a plus or minus, but in this case, only the positive version of the fourth root of this guy. And um, quite frequently, we would choose to put the 160 in front and write it as 160 minus that value. Um, moving over to number four, um, kind of a tricky little question because y prime is dy dx, of course. So if we were to write that as dy dx, I'm gonna bring the x across. I'm gonna leave the x where it is. And this is now gonna be one over y squared plus one. Now, this is a memorized fact that not everybody remembers, but this is the arc tangent or the inverse tangent of y. So the inverse tangent of y is one half x squared plus some constant. So of course, if we wanna finish this idea to get this y by itself, I would take the tangent of both sides. So if I took the tangent of both sides, I'm looking at a nice little story right here. And this is very, very important that that constant is actually inside that tangent. And so according to this, if I plug in the number two, I should get the number zero. So let's see what happens. If I plug in two, two squared is four. And so that would be the tangent of two plus C, according to this, this has to be zero. Now, the nice thing about that is from our days in math analysis, the only time that a tangent can be zero is at zero itself. And so the way that that tangent would be zero would be if C itself was negative two and we're done. So Y is equal to the tangent of one half X squared minus four. There we go. And again, if I've made a mistake anywhere on here, please, for goodness sakes, let me know because um, I'm actually looking back at my answer key and well, let's just say that my, I guess one of my older versions of the review is a little different than this one. So I'm at times needing to kind of do this separate. So if on this particular problem, now I would call this like a separation of variables and we could do the dy dx thing, but really we don't need to bother because this is a simple polynomial. But if we were to, integrate the double derivative, we would get the single derivative, which is 5x plus 6x squared plus some constant. Now notice up in here, this says that in the first derivative, if I were taking the value and plugging in one for x, the answer for the derivative should be 15. So we can tell pretty quickly that this first constant should be negative four. So I now know that y prime, also known as dy dx, was 5x squared, 5x plus 6x squared minus 4. 
And of course, we're going to do one more integral, and that would give me y, because the integral of dy dx is y. That's going to give me 5 halves x squared um, plus 2x cubed minus 4x, again, plus c. But keep in mind, this c is a different c than the other one. So some people like to call it c1 and c2, but I don't even bother. I just call it c because a constant is a constant. And so I'm just going to find my new constant. But this one says that if I plug in 2 for x, I'm supposed to get 8. And if I plug in 2 for x, let's see, 2 squared is 4. 4 times 5 is 20 over 2 is 10. I plug in 2, I get 8 times 2 is 16, minus 8 plus c. Somehow, when I put that all together, I'm supposed to get the number 8. And so I've got 26 minus 8, which is 18. So if I have 18 plus c is supposed to be 8, it appears to me that c must be, what, negative uh, 10, uh, if I have done that all correctly. I do have an old answer key, and this doesn't look like I'm getting exactly the same answer, but I hope I haven't made a mistake. So if I have, it, it probably is something small, like um, I have a different plus and minus sign in my answer key from the previous year's key. So I'm not sure if I made a mistake here, but I got that C right here was negative four. Let's double check, plug in one, you get five. Plug in one, we get six. Those add up to 11. Oh, this should be a plus four. So let's make that a plus four here and here. That's gonna make that a plus four here, which is a plus eight here. And those all add up to 26 and 34. So this is now 34. Ooh, bummer. And so in order to make that happen, I guess my last year's key was better. That's gonna make this a minus 26. And that matches my key from before. Sorry about the mistake on that one, but at least I caught it before we stopped. All right, I'll be back for the next chunk soon. All right, bye-bye.